folks, appreciate y'all being here. We got Miami head coach Jim Laranega, a UM Sports Hall of Fame inductee as of this week. Uh, we'll start with the opening statement from coach, and then we'll go into questions. Hey, no, you didn't even clap. I mean, Alex just told you uh, it's a pretty big deal. How many of you are in the Hall of Fame? Uh, no, I'm very, very excited uh, about being selected. Um, and my focus right now is on preparing our team for the upcoming season. We've got a really good group of guys. They're working really hard. They're playing very well. Um, and uh, we're going to be very well tested early in the season. Uh, one of our uh, our first home game is against uh, um, Lafayette. Our first road game is at Central Florida, a team that beat us last year here. And our first neutral site game is my alma mater, Providence College. So we, we've got our work cut out for us. Uh, people ask me if uh, we're going to play small ball and I said no we're going to play smaller ball because we're going to be very very small uh, across our front court without Sam Wardenberg and Rodney Miller and Dan Gack 6'10", 6'11", 7 foot so we're going to be small but hopefully uh, be able to make up for it with speed and quickness. Questions? Are you happy with uh and your coaches are never satisfied or happy, but with where the team is right now, considering that the, the season starts a couple weeks Yeah, away, we're, we're in a good place right now, but we'll find out. We have a scrimmage this weekend, uh, and that, that'll give us much more of an indication of how far along we are. Can you talk about Nigel as a, as a point guard? Um, you know, Charlie was such a focal point of the team last year and all the spectacular things he did. How will Nigel be similar and different? Well, um, first of all, I think we really have uh, two great options at the point right now, uh, Nigel Pack and Bensley Joseph. And I think they're a very good combination. Bensley, after a year of experience, he's a tenacious defender. He rebounds well as a point guard. And he's distributing the ball well and playing well. And I think that really helps Nigel, who's making the transition from being a two guard at Kansas State to being a point guard here. Nigel's an outstanding long range shooter. He's got a beautiful touch. He's got a great feel for offense. Um, Charlie was unique in the way he played and Nigel's uh, unique in the way he plays. I think our fans will, will love Nigel because he, he can go on runs like I've seen him do in practice. So I, I think he's a very, very good basketball player. Talking about his his energy and his size, obviously, what is he going to bring to the group? Yeah, the the, the biggest thing for Norchad is making the jump from uh, a mid-major level to to the ACC, and going against the size of the athlete that we face on a uh, every single night. Uh, Norchad is a high-energy young man. He's physically strong. He jumps very well. He's got a nice shooting touch. Uh, but he's also kind of young to the game in terms of what American college basketball is like. And uh, he's, he's learning our way of doing things. And hopefully he'll get a lot of help from his teammates. You know, one, one of the things that I see is uh, that guy over there, Jordan Miller, is playing at a very, very high level in practice. I love the way he's playing, how smart he's playing. And if he can kind of help Norshad inside a little bit more. And then Anthony Walker, who's having a very good preseason, if he, if he plays at a high level as well, then we should be okay. We have a, f a couple of freshmen, uh, Fava Ire and uh, AJ Casey uh, and Adilo uh, Jovanovic. They, they are in the learning process, but I'm hoping they'll also be able to give us some, some quality minutes and really good depth. You're talking about Jordan, you had mentioned in the other press conference that you want the ball in his hands more this year, and he just told us also that that's going to be one thing we're going to see different, that he's going to bring the ball up the floor. Some of the things he didn't do last year, can you talk about that, what the fans are going to see different from his role? Yeah, uh, because of the way he played throughout the summer, uh, his assist-to-turnover ratio was 4-1. to one. Once we started official practice and now we're going, you know, 15 to 20 hours a week, 
I was curious as to if, if his ball handling would suffer, because now we're talking about a lot more possessions, a lot more minutes, and his assist to turnover ratio is still four to one. So as long as he can continue to handle the ball as efficiently, we want to put the ball in his hands a lot because he's not uh, someone who dribbles the ball to death. He, he, he really is very efficient offensively. He's got a great straight line driving game. He's got a great little jump hook. He can hit the spot up three, uh, and he's a very, very willing passer. So uh, he's going to be really good. Christian Watson entered this season known as a high octane scorer. What have you really seen from him up to this point? Uh, Christian, I would I would describe him as a high octane athlete, not so much scoring. His his scoring has been somewhat inconsistent. You know, he has days where he shoots the ball very well, and he has days where, you know, he struggles. Uh, but what he never struggles out at is his ability to accelerate in the open court, offensively and defensively. He may become our best defender. Uh, he's got to work at that, but at six seven. He's, he's quick enough to guard point guards. And he's big enough and strong enough to guard inside guys. So hopefully he'll learn a lot this year at the defensive end. The offensive end, that you know, that changes. You know, when a guy is a really consistent shooter like a Nigel Pack, uh, then you can kind of count on him. Right now, I'm more counting on, on Christian to be there at the defensive end. And then what steps has someone like a Ruga Poplar taken on that defense done before? Because I know that was an area where you want to see improvement from them. Uh, Wooger is elevating his game to an extremely high level. Um, his straight line driving and dunking ability, his defensive rebounding ability, his physical strength and, and uh, toughness, uh, He's, he's looking at having a very, very good uh, year with uh, a lot of room for, for improvement still. Luca said, um, I was chatting, chatting with him before, that he said that the biggest difference he feels so far this year is that last year he felt that the game was going way too fast for him and he couldn't, he couldn't keep up. And he said this year he feels like the game slowed down, and I said, no, maybe your mind sped up and the game is still at the same speed. But he said definitely that he feels like he's on pace now, whereas last year he felt everything was kind of a blur. Do you see that, that his, yeah. his understanding of the game is? I, I think it's true for all freshmen. The college game is so much faster. It doesn't look like it. High school kids look like they play hard, but it's, it's not the bigger, stronger, faster athletes. And the transition from high school to college is huge. And uh, for most freshmen, Wooger specifically, his high school experience is very, very different than what he's experiencing here. You know, learning to play team defense rather than just individual defense. How important rebounding is for a guard. Uh, how you have to share the ball on offense with other really good offensive players rather than being just the go-to guy who can shoot anytime he wants. You know, when he was in high school, I mean, they retired his jersey. That's how good a score he was. So he had the green light to shoot any shot anytime he wanted. Not here. Hey, you got other good guys on your team, and you got to find the open man just like they do. Coach, what have you really seen from Nigel and Isaiah in that backcourt? How have you so far? I think they're doing fantastic. I think they get along great. They play off of each other great. Isaiah's playing the best basketball I've ever seen him play. He's doing things defensively at a much better rate. He still has areas that he can get better at, but uh, he's handling the ball so much better. And he's put, the, the things we talk about, like I tell the guys, you have to be in control. First, you got to be in control of yourself. Then you got to be in control of your defender. Then you got to be in control of the other eight guys. And it's hard to do that. And in Isaiah's case, he's really learned to be in control of himself. So I, I think he, we, we've got a good team. The only thing is, we're in a great league. So everybody's got a good team. It's not like we're better than someone else. We're, we're competitive. Now we've got to figure out how to win these close games. Last year, I think we were in 17 games that were decided in the last minute. It's a lot of games that you have a chance to win or lose. Uh, we won a lot of them. How much do you 
much does uh, getting as far as an Elite Eight, how much does that confidence and experience carry over with the guys who came back from last year just in their mindset that they reached that point? Yeah, I think um, when you're a real competitive athlete and you reach the Elite Eight, you know what you think? Ah, we could have got to the Final Four. And so that makes you hungry. And, and I think our guys are. The newcomers, they have no idea. I asked our newcomers if, how many teams made the NCAA tournament. They didn't know. They didn't know it was 68. I said, yeah, well, if you want to make, make something, you want to get to someplace, you better figure out how many teams are getting included. And if you look at it, and, and this is what I do, my staff, uh, 32 teams get an automatic qualifier because they won the tournament. So if you don't win the tournament, what are your chances of making the NCAA? Well, there's 36 teams now that are vying for an at-large bid with the other 330 teams. That's only one in 10 chance, really. So we got to beat out a lot of teams, especially teams in our own league. Because right, there's a lot of competition within the conference. Jim, I know you mentioned you're moving the band and I guess the student section. You've already said that, but how did that come about? Was like your idea? Did you, you know, talk about the genesis of that happening? Uh, so start again, because I. The band yeah. moving to the visitors. That, I had nothing to do with that. You didn't, okay, so how did that come about? That was Dan Radakovich came to me and said, he actually asked the question, why did you have the band and the students down at the. Uh, uh, Miami in. And so because there were no other fans in the place and wanted to have some atmosphere. And he said, well, how do you feel about moving to the other end? Because I want to create a, an atmosphere where the opponent is not so comfortable. It's fine, because I think we really do have the student body and the pep band behind us. Uh, I think Jay Reese and his, his folks at the pep band are uh, excited about the upcoming season. We've invited them to come over for a practice. I uh, hope they're going to do that in the next week or two. Um, the Category 5, our student spirit group, I think they'll be 100% behind that and want to create the atmosphere we're looking for. Coach, Anthony Walker said that he really worked on you know, improving his shot over the course of the season. What are your expectations for him entering, I think, that's year four now? You know, I think Anthony Walker uh, worked on his three-point shot throughout his career, and he now finally has a beautiful three-point shot. He's a very good three-point shooter. He consistently makes that shot throughout practice, and he's going to make them. The only thing I've asked him is to not fall in love with the three because he's got some other great weapons inside that we could really take advantage of. So if you look at these three guys in particular, Jordan Miller, Norshed Omir, and Anthony Walker, if they're each taking five or six threes a game, we're in trouble. But if they're each taking two or three, we're in great shape because they'll make a good percentage, but we have to have them inside as well. Jim, as you start your 12th season, does it seem like 12 years? Well, I'm starting my 51st season. <laughs> no, I know, I know. Uh, um, I enjoy coaching. I have really enjoyed coaching here at Miami. I think this is, first of all, a great institution, great academically, great socially. A beautiful geographic location, uh, a great environment and culture here. Uh, and my wife and I have, have loved every minute of it. And we just keep enjoying it because we have such good kids and I have such a great staff. Uh, my, my staff, I spend more time with them than I, I do with my own children. So uh, I, I like being around them. Have you noticed an uptick in uh, just as you're walking around town, just going around campus or town or whatever, uh, an uptick in interest in the program coming off that run that you just did this last spring? I would say I've, I've seen an uptick in being recognized more. You know, I thought I was recognized pretty regularly, but now um, it's even to a greater extreme. So I might be sitting at a restaurant or you know, going into a movie theater and people will stop me and want to talk. And that's wonderful. What do they say? What do they want to talk about? The run? Yeah. And how's the team going to be this year, do they all ask you? Exactly, just like you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> that's time for a few more for Coach Al. Jim, have you ever like, felt better going into a season about, about one of your teams than you do about this team? I mean, it, I'm thinking back to a year ago, and 
I remember no, I didn't feel this good last year at this I time. I know. No, the best I've ever felt, honestly, is in 2012, 2013. When I saw we had a, a guard like Shane Larkin, Duran Scott, Trey McKinney Jones, and big guys like Kenny Kaji, Julian Gamble, Reggie Johnson, I thought, well, we've got size and speed and quickness and scoring ability. And in looking at the league, we're every bit as good or better than anybody in our conference. This year, I don't know that yet because of size. Oh, it's, it's, it's a, a different uh, factor in the game. A guy who's 6'7 going against a guy 6'11. Will we be in foul trouble all the time? Will we be able to score with our back to the basket? Will we be able to shoot the three well enough? I mean, all of those things. And will we be able to win close games like we did last year? Can you talk a little bit about Harlan Beverly? He didn't play a whole lot last year with injury, but he's coming back. What do you expect from him this year? Yeah, Harlan has, has had a very tough time since coming here because of injury. Um, his back was a real problem. Uh, that sophomore year, he got it out for as many games as he could, and then we had to shut him down. He's not back 100% yet. He probably thinks he is. He's not in the best shape of his life yet, uh, and he's working hard. He's a great kid, wants to be a coach one day, but you know he's, he's battling being able to function at a very high level. Coach, could you just describe your reaction to being selected to the Hall of Fame? Yeah, you know, I've, I've never been one that, that uh, spends a lot of time on, on uh, individual accolades. I think it's wonderful when someone is recognized and I'm appreciative of being selected. Um, but uh, there are so many uh, well-deserving student athletes and maybe coaches. So I just feel honored to be included with them. Uh, I know Katie Meyer is in the Hall of Fame. I know Vinny Scavo, our great trainer, is in the class of 2023 with me. Um, but the, the thing that the Hall of Fame really says is we have great athletic tradition. Oh, if you look at the history of our football program, our baseball program, winning national championships, I think of our, our uh, women's programs here, they've all been very highly successful. You know, Amy Dean, I mean, she was a coach of our Olympic team. Oh, that, that's, that's pretty special. So I'm just proud to be, you know, included with, with all those folks. Coach, how competitive are Nigel and Isaiah against each other in practice? Yeah, it's interesting. I keep them together a lot because I want them to develop really good team chemistry. But the other day, they went against each other for the first time in a long time, and it was quite a battle. And I, I knew they both took on the challenge. So it was fun. They're, they're, they're both such terrific players and competitors. Last question from Wyatt. Coach, you were talking about the leap from high school to college and what it takes to really dominate the ACC for freshmen. Um, what's inspired you about the freshmen, the group of four ability to absorb so much from Isaiah and even Nigel and Norchot as well? Well, here you have a group of freshmen much different than their predecessors. They, these guys are 6'7", 6'8", 6'8", 6'11". They're bigger. And mostly bigger guys take a little bit longer to develop, especially someone, let's say, like Favor, you know, he's really new to the game. And, and so it's going to take him a while. But I think all of them work so hard, I know they'll get there. How soon? Will they get there in December or January? I don't know. Will they get there by next year? That I'm extremely confident in. All right, Coach, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody.